Hi guys, this is the third video about the great book of Ruth Gullit, How to Watch Soccer. It is about the chapter to Italy. It all started when PSV met AC Milan in the Gamper Trophy in Barcelona. Ruth was playing in defense. He made quite an impression because after the game, the Italian technical manager Ariodo Breda looked him up in dressing room and asked him, Next season, you play Milan? You play Milan? Flattered, Ruth answered, C, C. Months after, Ruud was transferred to AC Milan in a record transfer at the time of 7.5 million euros. Few weeks after, AC Milan bought Marco Van Basten. The manager, Arrigo Saki, put Ruud on the right wing in a 4-3-3 formation. Pietro Paolo Verdes was the center forward and Marco Van Basten was on the left. Van Basten injured his ankle in a game against Fiorentina. Next week, Against Verona, AC Milan without him played with Ruud and Verdes up front together in a 4-4-2 formation. Verona was demolished, so Saki switched permanently to a 4-4-2 formation with Ruud and Verdes in the attack. These formations and rules changes required a switch in thinking and playing, both for the team and for individual players. Later, Ruud moved to the right of the midfield at AC Milan. Once again, he had to adapt. Advantage for him as a runner was that there was plenty of space to do his thing along the touchline. Root's cross was a trained one. It hadn't come naturally. At Feyenoord, he had practiced crossing continually, because it's a key weapon in a 4-3-3 arsenal. Hootman practiced scoring, while Root the cross, always at full speed, the full 100%, while most players normally train at about 60%. Rude's physical build posed a problem. He runs with long strides. That meant it was essential to judge his pace exactly. There was no room for a bit of dribbling in between. Where space was limited, his physique created another problem. He couldn't correct his stride by taking a quick extra step like shorter players can. So timing was everything. He always practiced with Hootman, the regular center forward, to develop an automatic connection. When you cross, you have to anticipate how your teammates are going to run in. So if the striker makes a dummy run to the near post, you send your cross to the far post, and vice versa. You each need to know what the other is doing, because a cross to the near post requires a different touch to a cross to the far post. Strikers use dummy runs to shake off their markers. Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo both score often and almost always after a run. When their side has possession, they are constantly moving around to keep their opponents wondering what they are going to do. Before they get in a scoring possession, they have already shaken off their markers with any number of dummies and fake runs. Defenders know the ploy is coming, and they still sprint off in the wrong direction. The explanation is simple. When you are running backward, you have far less control over your body and you quickly lose balance with the slightest twist or turn. When you are running forward, you have far more control and when you have the ball, you are the one who sets the pace. At AC Milan, players constantly practiced how to switch roles as soon as they lost position in the middle of a coordinate attack. It is basically about organizing the team to prevent a goal being scored. When you're getting in possession, it's less about organization and there is more space for intuitive play. Well, two defensive rules were the basic creed at AC Milan. The first rule, never lose possession in the center when building an attack. After showing us how some teams and countries accept and build up from the back, he showed us also that others just don't. And after all, it's not always possible to build up from the back. The second rule. Never let the other side attack through the center. Players have to force the other side to attack along the wing, because there, they have more chance of closing down a player and regaining possession by using the touchline like an extra defender. And this starts with the forwards. It was at AC Milan that Ruud developed into a matter player. To a large extent, that was down to his new surroundings. Italy was attracting top players in the late 80s and early 90s, Italy was like England today. Italian clubs bought up the world's best. Guys like Maradona, Ricard, Van Basten, Zico, 
Falcao, Daniel Passarea, Michel Platini and many others. And Italy itself also had world-class players such as Franco Baresi, Carlo Ancelotti, Roberto Baggio, Paolo Maldini and Roberto Mancini. The level of soccer played in Italy's Serie A was far superior to that of any other European league. It was similar to the difference between Spain's Primera Division and Europe's other leagues today. Good players improve each other and raise the competition to a higher level. For strikers, Serie A could be grueling. Every Italian knew how to defend, whether playing for Juventus, for Cremonese, Roma or other teams. Dutch clubs don't focus on training players in how to switch roles after losing possession. Strikers can find that difficult because their focus is on the ball. At Milan, players like Saki, Ancelotti and Baresi would soon bring you back down to reality if you were lost in thought and forgot your place in the organized team. Sending still after an attack is deadly for a team. By playing with discipline, they nullified every surprise that the other team had prepared for them. At AC Milan, there was no way they could be surprised, because they were so well organized, except with players like Maradona, Zola, Zico or Klinsmann. Being so tightly organized, they first had to give the other side space to play forward. By forcing players to the side, they made them build up from their right or left back. Then, when they passed the ball into midfield, all 10 of them were ready to pounce on it to regain possession. At that time, there was no team outside Italy that knew how to deal with the way Milan players pressed. Even good players make mistakes under pressure. At training sessions, they practiced pressing and sticking close together, keeping within 5 meters of each other, perfecting their tactics. When they were at the high of their game, they trained 11 against 11 on a half-sized pitch no wider than the 16 meters area. You have to be able to combine because it's impossible to dribble. It was not always fun, but it forced you to make quick decisions. In addition to an organized defense, you need a plan of attack. This has to include plenty of space for players to use their intuition, particularly the strikers. You can't rely on prepared moves. Everyone knows them. They say that good soccer players can always play well together, but sometimes combination simply doesn't work and different qualities of various players don't match. At FC Barcelona, they have at least three amazing players, Messi, Luis Suarez and Neymar. The way they work together is exceptional. As every video, I will finish with something he said. The new system 442 rather than 433 fit like a tailor-made Italian suit. And at the end, it would be great if you read the whole book, it's so impressive. Hi guys, I'm offering my online course How to Analyze Football Basics at a discounted price. The links are in the description below. If you like this video, hit the like button, share it and subscribe to receive more videos. For football related content, videos, articles, analysis and so on, follow me on social media. Again, the links are in the description below.